Hello everyone. Let us continue mechanical properties of fluids. As we have learned, the flow of fluids is divided into two types: streamline flow and turbulent flow. Today, let us see the difference between streamline and turbulent flow. Streamline flow is characterized by steady flow. The velocity will be less than the critical value, and speed and direction of a particle of the liquid at a point remains same. But in case of turbulent flow, it is characterized by an unsteady flow. The velocity of flow exceeds the critical value. the speed and direction of the liquid at a point varies means it changes notice this stream line it is an imaginary line within the liquid the tangent drawn at any point on it gives the direction of velocity of fluid particles then what is meaning of this critical speed it is the maximum speed of a liquid above which streamline motion becomes turbulent motion now let us see the principle of continuity when an ideal liquid flows steadily through a pipe of varying cross section the product of area of cross section and the speed of the liquid remains constant at all points along the pipe so what is principle of continuity when an ideal liquid flows steadily through a pipe of varying cross section the product of area of cross section and speed of the liquid remains constant now let us learn equation of continuity for that let us consider one simple diagram of a pipe having Vari uh, variable cross section means you can observe here <coughs> area of cross section at this end of the pipe let it be a1 and here let it be a2 then v1 and v2 are the speed of the liquid for the cross sectional areas a1 and a2 respectively now what is this equation of continuity the product of cross sectional area of the pipe and the fluid speed speed at any point along the pipe is constant means the area of cross section at this end is a1 speed is v1 so take the product of these two a1 v1 similarly this side cross sectional area is a2 and speed is v2 take the product of these two it gives a2 v2 so according to the principle it is a1 v1 must be equal to a2 v2 and it remains constant means it must be equal to constant so here in this case v1 is speed of the liquid for the area of cross section a1 and v2 is speed of the liquid for the area of cross section a2 so equation of continuity is a1 v1 is equal to a2 v2 is equal to constant see i hope you know this one in waterfalls the water flux becomes narrower near the point of reach what is reason for this one we can explain it with the help of this equation of continuity that is a1 v1 is equal to a2 v2 is equal to constant uh, velocity of waterfall increases downwards and area decreases velocity means speed increases but area decreases so that the product of velocity and area should remain constant okay now let us learn most important principle that is bernoulli's principle or bernoulli's theorem you can say let us see the statement of bernoulli's principle the sum of kinetic energy potential energy and pressure energy 
per unit mass of an ideal fluid in streamline motion is constant. So, what is statement of Bernoulli's principle? The sum of kinetic energy, potential energy and pressure energy per unit mass of an ideal fluid in streamline motion is constant. Then to explain this Bernoulli's principle, let us express it mathematically. Kinetic energy is half mv square. But we are taking it per unit mass. So, m get cancelled, you will get half v square plus similarly potential energy is mgh m get cancelled so you will get gh and pressure energy is p divided by rho is equal to constant so sum of all these three energy we have to take that is kinetic energy half v square plus potential energy gh plus pressure energy p by rho all these are taken per unit mass it must be equal to constant. If we explain the symbols here, V is velocity of the liquid flowing through a tube. H is height of the liquid from the reference level. G is acceleration due to gravity. P is pressure exerted by the liquid. And rho is density of the liquid. So from the equation, it is found that as the velocity increases, pressure decreases or you can say if velocity decreases, definitely pressure should increase. So this is Bernoulli's principle. From Bernoulli's principle, we can take some important points here. Let us see what are those. First point is Bernoulli's principle is an illustration of law of conservation of energy. It can be applied to ordinary liquids with sufficient accuracy. Even Bernoulli's principle can be applied to gases also. But the theory is complicated due to the high compressibility of gases. However, the general effect is same in the streamlined flow of gases. Now let us see some illustrations for Bernoulli's principle. So many illustrations can be given. Let us uh, take some illustrations here. Let us take one simple one. Uh, very common example. Common illustration you can say. If a sheet of paper placed on a table is blown across its top surface, the paper rises. This is because... The air blown on the top surface of the paper decreases the pressure above the paper. A net upward force rises the paper. This is one best illustration for Bernoulli's principle. Let us take a second one. Strong winds, hurricanes blown off the roofs of the houses. This is because the air blown on the top surface of roof decreases the pressure above the roof. The atmospheric pressure inside the house is higher. When you compare the pressure above the roof and inside the house, inside the house atmospheric pressure is a little higher. This Higher pressure lifts the roof and the roof is blown off by the wind. This is a very nice one. Let us consider uh, two light balls. And let us suspend it very close to each other. If air jets are blown between them. What happens to the balls? The balls will move towards each other. Uh, what is the reason for this one? Due to high velocity of air jet, the pressure decreases in the region between the balls. So, the balls are pushed towards each other by atmospheric pressure.
this one is very simple and uh, very interesting one a ping pong ball can be supported by a stream of air moving upwards again the same reason here when a jet of air is blown pressure decreases in the air stream hence the ball is pushed towards the stream by atmospheric pressure the upward motion of air stream give the support to the ball against the gravity so the ball can be supported by stream of air here now let us see about uh, two important words one is dynamic lift another one is magnetic lift so what is this dynamic lift dynamic lift is the force which acts on a body such as aeroplane wing a hydrofoil or spinning ball by virtue of its motion through a fluid this can be explained by taking even means illustration of bernoulli's principle in case of dynamic lift of a ball in many games such as cricket tennis Uh, it is observed that a spinning ball deviates from its parabolic path this can be partly explained using bernoulli's principle when a moving ball is not spinning the velocity of air above and below the ball at corresponding points is same therefore the air does not exert upward or downward force on the ball and hence the ball moves in parabolic path without deviation but when a moving ball is spinning the ball drags the air along with it the stream lines above the ball due to the translation and rotational motion of the ball are opposed to each other as a result the velocity of air above the ball is less than that below the ball this results in pressure difference according to bernoulli's principle therefore the air exerts upward force on the ball and hence the ball deviates from the parabolic path so this is dynamic lift now let us see what is this magnus effect it is the dynamic lift due to spinning of the ball now let us take illustration of bernoulli's principle in case of aerofoil that is aircraft wing this is one cross sectional view of wing mm, according to bernoulli's principle the pressure of any fluid decreases with increase in speed this fact is used in designing aircraft wings if you observe the figure the curvature of upper surface is more than the curvature of lower surface as the aircraft moves in the runway with a high uh, velocity the air blows over and below the wings the air travels long distance on the upper surface when compared to lower surface in the same interval therefore velocity of air above the wing is much higher compared to velocity of the air below the wings according to bernoulli's principle the pressure above the wings is low and pressure below the wings is very high therefore an aircraft lifts up easily so this can be this so this is bernoulli's principle which is used in case of aircraft wing two more applications are there in bernoulli's principle one is efflux 
it is the flow of liquid through a hole of a tank another one is venturi meter venturi meter is nothing but it is a device used for the measurement of flow of a uh, fluid in a pipeline and definitely venturi meter works on the principle of bernoulli's theorem or bernoulli's principle so you can expect a question venturi meter works on which principle for one mark so you can write the answer venturi meter works on the principle of that is bernoulli's principle okay let us continue thank you